No running in the corridors, boy. I'm late, sir. If you weren't late, you wouldn't need to run, would you? No running in the corridors. Sorry, sir. No jumping. Right, three, eight. Places, books open. Didn't you hear the bell? What on earth are you all clustered around my desk like that for? I can assure you there's nothing of any importance happening there. Good morning. <coughs> it must. I, uh, I'm so sorry. I, I was thinking it was Monday. It is Monday, Mr. Wentworth. Ah, then, then that explains it. If I, if I might just explain, uh, Headmaster. You always can. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You see, as Miss Coombs is taking her Monday music boys in the library, where you normally take the... the, uh, the, uh, the Up the uh, fourth. The... Thank you. Be quiet. Have you one? Yes, sir. Oh. Where well, you normally take the, the, the upper fourth. Uh, the, 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 the music room is being used for PT on wet days. I should have remembered, of course, that I was taking 3A and 4. No, no, that's not right. I should have been taking 3A in 6. You, you take the upper fourth and four. I should have remembered that, thank oh, you. Not for a moment, sir. No, no, no. I wasn't suggesting that you were... Uh, the fault is entirely mine. That's, uh, that's what I was explaining, sir. Quite clear. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Headmaster. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, <coughs> thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, no. Get on with the work. This is the BBC Home Service. Here is the news, and this is Geoffrey Wincott reading it. Last night, our bombers attacked targets in Germany and German-occupied territory. The meat ration is to be reduced. Hello, AJ. I thought you were having fun with 3A this period, room four. Not this period. What period do you have fun with 3A? This period, insofar as the fun, as you call it, is in accord with sound teaching. Oh, yes. We are here to teach. But not in room four. Owing to PT being taken in the music room, if wet. You're not sitting on them, are you? Well, I thought you did that. Mm -hmm. Sat on 3A. They speak your name with awe. Ever since you threw that hall and night at Etheridge and made his nose bleed. Oh, well, yes, but that was satisfactorily explained at the time. By the way, I've just found the headmaster in my classroom, but the boys all clustered round... Would you mind giving up? <laughs> Threw him out, did you? All clustered round the desk. No, 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 of course I didn't. I mean, the headmaster's a right to do as he pleases. Not that it's a practice I approve of, of course. Calling all the boys up around the desk. I haven't seen my books anywhere, have you? They get too keen, you know. Just for the places. Do you know that the 3A actually tipped my desk off its days on one occasion? Well, they are very keen in 3A. Oh, I dare say, but it resulted in a lot of spilled ink. And that unfortunate accident to Ethridge was known. Uh, I think Rawlinson's put his gown on the wrong hook again. You haven't seen my exercise books, have you? Are they blue? Yes, blue. Pretty dog-eared. Well, it is rather late in the term. About 20 of them. 18, to be exact. In alphabetical order? Of course, in alphabetical order. And I've seen them. You have? Where? They were on the table. Really, really? I thought they were finished with, so I burnt them. You burnt them? I'm pulling my leg out you. Did I do a thing like that? Oh, I wouldn't put it past you. How on earth did they get in there? Well, it's certainly the last place I'd have looked. Now I'm late. I certainly haven't any time for your pranks, Gilbert. You put them in there, didn't you? Some of them, according to a Reuter message from Cairo, are being taken on board British ships to make the problem of feeding and transport easier. Meanwhile, Italian propaganda, as well as the Italian armed forces, are very much on the defensive. Rome broadcasts and newspapers are doing their best to make out that the Italians are still confident and not afraid. Thank you very much. I've been looking for those. Very well then, the initials SPQR, anybody? Yes, Roberts. Uh, Society for the Prevention of... Room six, not room four. Not four, six. Senatus populusque Romanus. The people and senate of Rome. Yeah, who's that, sir? Uh, I can't see who that is, Briggs. Yes, sir. Very well, then. Now we will continue. We will continue. Oh! The, uh, the oh. Which, uh, I think oh. we didn't deal oh. with last week. <laughs>
Good morning, sir. Yeah. What boy are you, boy? Brick, sir. Shouldn't you be in class? Shouldn't you, sir? Thank you. What did you say? Nothing, sir. Be very careful, Briggs. I'm in no mood for... Thank you. What form are you? Upper fourth, sir. Well, why aren't you in it? Thank you. Headmaster sent me out, sir. No doubt, with a very good reason. To see you wanted to see him, sir. And it was you, sir. Oh, no, it wasn't. Here, take these books. I don't want to see the headmaster. Etheridge is rotten at algebra, isn't he, sir? And... Take the books. Thank you, sir. Repeatedly telling that boot boy not to leave this basket in the middle of the floor. Go away, Briggs. Yes, sir. Oh, oh thank you. Go, boy, go. Very well, sir. And I'll tell the headmaster you don't want to see him. Briggs! Oh! Rick and Mortis has set in. <laughs> I heard that, Hopgood. Take 50 lines. Oh, no, sir, not just for that. Would everyone like 50 lines? You only gave Mason 50, and he was singing My Canary's Got Circles Under His Eyes, sir. That's because I sang it jolly well. Take another 50, Mason. And go and stand in the corner. Now, I'm in no mood to take any nonsense this morning. We're here to work, and the sooner you realise that, the better. Work together, and we shall finish our studies together. No work, and we shall all be staying in this afternoon. Right? <laughs> Let the class see your face, Mason. Yes, sir. May too must learn to suffer. <laughs> now, today, we're going to study the theorem of Pythagoras, the Greek philosopher and mathematician. <laughs> well, come now, Cephalus. Something to cry about? Pythagoras never hurt anybody? He's Greek, sir. Well done, Atkins. Remember something that I told you less than ten seconds ago? You mean Cephalus is a Greek, sir? It makes him homesick hearing about other Greeks. Thank you, Holgood. I realise that Cephalus is far from his place of birth. Where well, tears are perhaps more usual than we are accustomed to here. But Pythagoras is no crying matter. No laughing matter either. Take another 50 lines, how good. <laughs> I must understand, Cephalus, that I cannot have crying boys in my class. You have to learn not to cry. And if you work hard and pay attention, I do not despair of being able to teach you something. But if you're going to burst into tears at the mere mention of another Greek, then I cannot help you. I mean, supposing, supposing Etheridge or Anderson were to burst into tears at the mere mention of some well-known Englishman, like, like, like... Mr. Chamberlain? Barry Coons! Dr. Crippy! George Roby! All right, all right, that's enough. <laughs> Silent. Please, sir. Yes? Sir, what about Oswald Mosley? My father says he... I said that was enough. Or Stafford Cripps. My father says that he's the... enough, sick. Anderson. <laughs> Want it? <laughs> yes, sir. Everyone not wanting 50 line. Like you're saying, I not want it. <laughs> Good gracious. Is that all, boy? Everyone not getting, if that's all you're worrying about. Yes, sir. Only 
Mason and Hopgood guessing. And Etheridge, Etheridge, just for them. Oh, sir, I miss <laughs> Now, once and for all, Cephalus, I cannot teach a crying boy. You might just as well go back to your, to, to, to your, to your own country. <laughs> Do you know, they chased his father out of Greece in a revolution or something. Mason. A big man with a black beard chased him for three miles and he had to escape in a small boat in disguise in a That will do, Mason. And his grandmother got hit on the knee with a brick, didn't she, I said that will do, Mason. AJ, can I borrow a dictionary? Oh, you're busy. Never mind. A right angled triangle. A, B, C. Go through that. Now, I'm not a martinet. Would you say I was a martinet, Mason? I don't know, sir. I don't understand you. I don't know what a martinet is. You soon would if I was. Were. I warn you, Trench. It's a little martin, like Martin Two Soppy Brother in Mr. Gilbert's house. A house martin. <laughs> Thank you, Anderson. Take 50 lines. I must try not to be funny. Some people can't help being funny, sir. Then they'd better try. I'm not a martinet, but I will not tolerate doubts being thrown. Now, the boy responsible will find that an another offence will carry an imposition. What sort of imposition, sir? A pretty stiff one, I can assure you. The boy who threw the doubt is only to throw another one to find out. <clears throat> now, A, B, C. Stand up, the boy who threw that. Very well. The whole set will come back after school and do extra work. Oh, Stop groaning. Sir. Not here to groan. I'm here to work. Right. Open your books at page 12. Now we're going to prove that the. Not page 12, sir. My page 12 is quadratic equations. Rubbish, Trench. Page 12, Py yes. Pythagoras. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y over 7 equals 19. It's algebra, sir. Thank you, Trent. I think I know algebra when I hear it. He means it's algebra this afternoon, sir, not geometry. Yes, sir. Had we learned any geometry this morning, it would indeed have been algebra this afternoon. As we did not, it will be geometry this afternoon, until quite late in the afternoon. No groaning. So put away your hall at night and get out your hall on Stevens. Quietly. That's better. Page 12. Now we are going to prove that the square on the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. Is that a likely thing to happen? <laughs> what do you mean, uh, Mason? I mean, is a right-angled triangle likely to have a square on its hypotenuse? I don't quite follow you, Mason. If I draw a square on the line AC opposite the right angle, it has got a square on its hypotenuse. The question of whether it is likely to have one or not does not arise. Not on the board, sir, no, but I mean in real now, life. Now, if I further draw a square on the lines AC and CB. I mean, if real life triangles don't have squares on their hypotenuses, there wouldn't be much point in proving they're equal to whatever they're equal to, would it, sir? You mean there, you jump. You keep out of this, Etheridge. Oh, I see what he means, sir. I mean, it'd be a pretty good fluke if a triangle had squares and knowledge three sides at once, wouldn't they, sir? Wouldn't it? No, it would not. There's no question of a fluke about it. There the thing is. On the board, sir, yes, but I mean in real life. Geometry is not real life, Mason. The point is, do you accept the fact that there is a right angle triangle with squares on each of its sides? I suppose so, sir. Geometry is not supposing, Mason. No, sir, but it looks more like three squares joined together now with a space in the middle. <laughs> Very well. 
Let's put it this way. Three squares have their corners joined in such a fashion that the space between forms a right-angled triangle. The larger square is equal to the sum of the two smaller squares. Will that do for you? Okay. <laughs> Anything to get rid of the hypotenuse. <laughs> Please, sir, I think Sacralos is crying again. Thank you, Atkins. I'm not deaf. What is it this time, Sacralos? Sir, he doesn't like hypotenuses. He wants to do algebra, don't you, Sappy? He's lost his pen, sir. Well, where is the boy's pen? It is in the tool house of my gardener's aunt. Does it take 50 lines, Mason? That's 100 of them all together. No, sir. I've done this morning's 50. Don't you think that was jolly quick? Well done, Mason. Be quiet! Stop them. Take those away. I don't want them now. You asked for them, sir. Not in the middle of Pythagoras. Aren't you going to read them, sir? No, I'm not. Just a minute, Mason. These are not my lines. These look like two pages torn bodily out of your history exercise book. How do you explain them? Sir, there are protests, sir, for lines being a rotten sort of input, sir. Here, here. Lines of rotten, sir. Good old Mason. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sit down, Mason. You and I will have a little talk about this after school. The rest of you, open your books at page 12. And you will copy out the construction and proof of the theorem of Pythagoras. Any boy who hasn't finished when the bell goes will finish in his own time and show the work to me in the morning break tomorrow. I'm thoroughly fed up with the behavior of the whole set. And now you can get on with the work in silence. <laughs> in silence, I said, Sapphos. The very next person to speak in this room will come to my room tonight. The very next person. A music <laughs> All right, all right, settle down. Then. <laughs> Miss Coombs, Miss Coombs. Hello. Have a good day. Thank you. Quite good. Lots of lines. Have you seen anything of Miss Coombs? I wanted to have a word with her in private. Well, I saw her some time ago going into the squid room. Oh, I beg your pardon. The headmaster. Why well, do you want to see her? That is a matter between Miss Coombs and myself. Oh, is it indeed? Now, I always thought you were a dark horse, AJ. Where did the bands go up? Oh, come, Rawlinson. You can do better than that. How did she look? About the same as usual, maybe a bit pinker. Oh, dear. oh, now, by the way, you ought to have a look at this article about the Hitler Youth. It's got some very good tips on orderly behaviour and respect for authority. You know, it might even help you with 3A, putting them in those little brown shirts. My authority is adequately respected, I fancy. And I respect authority in my turn. Not, for example, by calling it silly, vulgar names like squid. What you're not been calling you now, then, eh, Jay? Oh, that's another matter. No, he's just suggesting we should all cringe to the headmaster more. Now is his chance, then. He wants to see you, eh, Jay? That's not very original. All right, if you don't believe me, ask Miss Coombs. What? You mean who? Whom? Wants to see me? When? About an hour ago, she said. I passed his room as she was coming out. She looked pink. She said she didn't want to see you. Oh, bad luck, AJ. But the squid did. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I hope you're not making this up. Would I do a thing like that? I would rather that that question remained a rhetorical one. Rawlinson, explain rhetorical to him, will you? Yes, come in. Ah, Wentworth. <clears throat> Headmaster, if I might just explain the affair with Miss Coombs, it was just an unhappy coincidence. You see, the boys uh, had been... All in good time, Wentworth. Sit down. Thank you, Headmaster, but I'd prefer to stand. Um, you see, 
I, I, I had just warned the boys that uh, if they didn't... I be... know nothing of your affair with Miss Coombs, Wentworth. This is new to me. It wasn't an affair with Miss Coombs, Headmaster. I mean, not in that sense of the word, or, or in any other sense. You see, she, she just brought in the, the music list, and it so happened that the yes, boys... Yes, she been... brought them in here and kindly said she would give you my message. Oh, oh is that, oh, is that all? Forget Miss Coombs, Wentworth. Oh, that's all very well, my headmaster, but Miss Try Coombs... Try and forget, Wentworth. Now we come to a more important matter. Headmaster? I understand that you were seen sitting in a basket in the boot room this morning at a time when you should have been supervising the work of your mathematical set. Ah, no, I, I can explain that. No master. explanation I'll... is necessary. I do not make it my business, as you know, to pry into the affairs of my masters. I trust you all implicitly. It's the boot boy. Mm, yeah, yes. But I must make it clear that I cannot allow any master to uh, fritter away in the boot room or anywhere else time which should be devoted to the teaching of my boys. That is what we are here for, to teach. <clears throat> Headmaster, I have persistently told the boot boy that he must not leave his basket in the middle of the boot room floor. It could be fallen over, as indeed happened. And moreover, I have known some of the smaller boys hide under it uh, to avoid their Sunday afternoon walk. No, really? Oh, yes, indeed. However, I realize that that is neither here nor there. Hmm. I'm very sorry for what has occurred, Headmaster, and I'm prepared, if you so wish, to give an undertaking never to enter the boot room again. I do not wish it. Thank you, sir. I hope you have sufficient self-control to make such an undertaking unnecessary. I have no objection whatsoever to your going into the boot room whenever the, the urge takes you, Wentworth. Hmm. How kind. Provided that neither the work of the boys nor the dignity of your position is endangered by your presence there. The school must come first, Wentworth. The school must come first. Oh, yes, indeed, Headmaster. As you know from past experience, I have only the school's best interests at heart. Please.